Jared Poland Fronos Photo.com. I'm back here with Sam for round two. Sam, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Don't sound so excited. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a bit of a long day. Long day? What, driving in your Ferrari? Yeah, you know it. It's hard to be uh, a ball. Yeah, anyway, so last time we met up, Sam was... Um, you can see part one if you click on whatever on the screen. I'm sure that's popping up at some point. Part one, Sam and I talked about he needs to make a portfolio of 10 images to get to show uh, to Antonelli Institute because he has a, a meeting to try to get accepted to the college. So I'm helping him figure out what 10 pictures to, to use. And we went through in part one and found a lot of pictures, or found some really good pictures. And then I basically told him to go out and let's try to find more images uh, based off of some other things. So what did you end up doing? Um, after we talked, the next event, whatever the next weekend was, then I had gone back to uh, the Strip District, which is like a kind of open market area in Pittsburgh, and back to that bridge that we had talked about. And um, I had tried to go back to that abandoned steel mill, but we got kicked out. So All right. There. Did you save all the images that I picked out for you? Um, no, I didn't get a chance to do that. But you have them. You know which ones they are? Uh, yeah, I, I have all the files. I just all don't right, have so what are, what are we looking at here? Are we starting to look at what you took during your assignment period? Uh, yes, this is while I was on the assignment. All right, so what were you going for here? Is this just a person you didn't know? Yeah, it was just this guy on the street selling uh, roasted peanuts, I guess. I was just doing a little bit like kind of portrait, kind of candid type stuff. Sure. Did did you try the long lens thing like I suggested? Um, Shooting at the further end of your 55 to 200 and seeing how the background will blow out? Actually, with this, it was with a 35-1.8 because mm -hmm. the, the morning of this, my, uh, my one friend was like, here, have a early Christmas gift. And he bought me a 35-1.8, so I was playing around with that. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I was pretty excited, so... All right, well, let's, let's blow through these quick. Um, I know we've got six pages of images to go through, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, so here we go. We've got this image right here. I like the image. I think this will be a strong candidate for a really contrasty black and white. Uh, in, right. terms of, in terms of composition, I like that you have the peanut thing back here because that's what he's doing, but I would have liked to have seen the whole peanut scoop in because you've left a lot of headroom up here. Right. There's a ton of headroom, so you could have brought down the, the composition a little lower, which would have gotten more of um, this thing in there. Oh, I also see that coffee cup, so in the future we could probably move that. I, I know it's a, a little different for candid stuff, but, you know, just ask and be like, hey, can I do some photos, and then you do that. I mean, it's a cool portrait. It's getting there. I would, I would keep it as a candidate. I don't know if it's going to be one that we would use, but I would definitely convert it to black and white, high contrast, and in the future ask if you can take pictures of this vintage old uh, roaster right? and just do some tight shots of that and, and just look for details. So that would be good. Uh, feel free to interrupt me at any point. Um, this, no, we're just going to skip past that. We're skipping past the old bay as well. Um, you'll get past the novelty of things blowing out of focus. Yeah, I think, it was like, huh? that's pretty much, that was pretty much what that shot was. It was playing with seeing how the bokeh was on that sure. lens. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll see it, and then, and then just remember that when you're photographing certain things so that the scene becomes more interesting. Right. Uh, we got a dead fish. We're just going to go. We got oysters. That's interesting. This kind of looks like a, a fetus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. All right, so here we go. This is good. All right, I like what you're doing here. You're using this – is, this is really good what you're doing here, basically. You're, you're utilizing – the, the, the oyster bar to draw you into the subject, right? Right. The only thing that's weird here is the background. What, what f-stop were you at? Do you have any idea? Um, I got probably it. Probably 1.8. Yeah, you were at 1.8. That's interesting. Be very, very careful at 1.8 also. Because what, what's going to happen, when you're shooting straight on, that's good. He's going to be in focus. I'm kind of in, curious why the background is so... In focus, not in focus, but visu visible. But he's really sharp, which is good. Uh, obviously, we need to um, meter for him a little better because to bring it back. This is where a little bit of fill light would kick in a, a little bit better. 
Um, this background's just throwing me off, but I like what you did with the drawing you into the subject. Try also a lower angle because what what that's going to do is is bring the background up so you're not going to see the cars and things like that. So shoot with the oyster bar a little lower and then you would focus in really nicely right on his face. All right? right. And then you'd still have the oysters in there and his face and the chef hat. And that way the background would drop out. Yeah, this background is, is, is killing us, right? So in yeah. a background like this, the lower angle is going to be better because you just want to fill the frame with the subject more um, and not see what's going on in the background because the background is really distracting. Interesting. This is one eight again. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, write that one down. I like this one because it's it, it, there's some textures, there's some colors, there's some interesting lines, um, and this probably isn't at one eight. I don't think. If I'm gonna look again, yeah, this one was at two eight. So because it didn't look as narrow of a depth of field. So yeah, keep this in mind. We'll keep going through here. Don't like the bolt so much. Not a big fan of the old, just the wall, you know what I mean? Right. I, I, and I'll try to give some more constructive feedback as we go on. So uh, this is an old bellows camera without a lens board or anything in it. Same thing. Cutlery. Gallery. Okay. We could work with this one more. Um, this again the reason i i kind of push to black and white a lot is because when the color is so weird like this from the light from the situation that you're in because these aren't you know daylight bulbs or anything right. black and white would get rid of all of the color cast and allow you to pump this up and give you a nice environmental portrait because i'm assuming that either this guy's art is on the wall or it's his gallery uh yeah it was his gallery okay so good this is a nice gallery shot also in the future be cognizant of the exit sign in the background and this uh -huh. open door, if you were to rotate your angle and cut off, you know, and, and, and have him turn, then you would have cut out this stuff and just focused in on the, the paintings on the wall in the background. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So this is a good shot. I'd like to see it in black and white. So definitely write that down because this shows you that you can interact with people that you either know or don't know and get them to pose with you or get them to pose for you. That's a good thing. Not a big fan of this one, just because it's it's kind of a weird lean-in pose. Okay. Uh, it's a little better, but what what is or where are we at here? What is this guy? Who is this guy? Uh, this is the same guy as the other picture. He was running this gallery that I ended up walking into, and um, this was just like at the like the front door. Okay. Um, one thing you could do is put your back to the front door so that the gallery becomes the background, and everything in it is important to the photo. Right. So keep that in mind when you're shooting, because right now we're looking right out the door at that car coming through. So we got tight shots of the work, and it's locked up. Come on. Hold on. I'm just waiting for my uh, chrome here to not be locked up. There we go. Let's see. What did I miss here? How did I miss these? Okay, here we go. All right, we got some people in the gallery. Not bad, but not one for the portfolio. Is that a red? Yeah. Is that a D3100 in red? It is. <laughs> I've never seen one of those. This is more interesting. More contrast, more contrast. Okay. Pump up contrast. Um, interesting. Why are we skipping past this? This is, what is this, a sewer hole of sorts? Yeah, it was like a gas line. All right. It's interesting, too. Uh, you know, keep this as a candidate if you like it. Um, I would, like, saturate this, oversaturate, get some more color into it. Okay. Some more yellow. That could be interesting. Uh, I'm going to skip past the words on that. What's it say? Waste of paint. Yeah. This is, this is good. This is interesting as well. So this is nice to see. Um, even the background is cool blown out. What I like actually in the background over there that I'm now drawn to is the smokestack, the smoke coming out of the, whatever it was coming out of. Yeah, I think that's the ketchup plant. Heinz. Yep. Ooh, I like Heinz. So now we're back to the bridge, right? Yeah. So now you're looking around trying to see, see some angles. Wow, oh, the ketchup plant. The, this is, is this same as you did before or different? Uh, 
the same bridge, just some more shots. Yeah, I like this one. I like this one. I'd, I'm i interested in the ketchup factory. Maybe I'll this weekend have to go over there and Yeah, that would be interesting. More. Yeah, I mean, the graffiti stuff doesn't do much for me because it doesn't really carry much meaning. Where this photo, yeah. on the other hand, shows that you're seeing something interesting. You know, even though you're in a, in a in the city, you're capturing this this bridge, but in a different light. And you use the you you did this in Lightroom, right? Uh, yes. How how much of the recovery slider did you use? Um, probably a lot. Yeah. You I know how you know? You know? I don't. You know how I could tell? Um, this no. stuff grays out. When okay. when you use re recovery, it grays out. I I would so it was a little overexposed. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. What were you exposing for? Um, not really sure. It was kind of like a, just spur of the moment. Were you an aperture priority or were you going for something? Uh, I believe I was in manual. And okay. I wasn't really thinking about my settings. <laughs> okay. I should have been and just. All right. No, it's, it's fine. Yeah. I don't mind this as much. This is nice. This is a nice black and white edit. This is good. Um, it, I don't know if I would use it in my top 10, but it's a nice black and white edit. This is, now, this shows some more interest because you're at a higher angle, and it's something that's, that's interesting. The no parking, um, it's just like the negative space and things like that are interesting as well. No parking tow-away zone, brighten this up, move the exposure up, and then pump up the contrast and make this really, really sharp. You know, I'd up the um, clarity in this one, but get you need more light in this. If you had more light in this, I think this would be a good story to tell with the bridge, the no parking. A cut, so maybe two, three shots of the bridge. Then you've got the no parking cone, you know, uh, that we just saw with the blue, you know, the one right, right. before this. Then we've got the no parking tow-away zone, and there we're, we're in the five images from this story. And we yeah. also have that image of your friend, the, the, the track runner, which is really good. I would use that as well. If you're going to go for the hands like this, um, we need to brighten this one up. Let more light in. You know, get the exposure. Pump the exposure up in this. I'm, I'm just curious of how it was shot so I can try to figure out how I can help you with exposure to get this better. One one hundredth of a second. Five six is the problem. But you were with the 55 to 200, right? Uh, yes. All right. So what camera... D3100. You can take this to yeah. 1600 ISO. You can take it to 3200 ISO without a problem. Let's think. So what do we need to do here? We need to let more light in, right? Because we need to compensate for this 5.6. So we're yeah. going to run you through a crash course on the things you can do to make this better, uh, to, to let in more light. All right. So when you see this image being this dark on the screen of your camera or, or whatnot, what is, the, what is one thing we can do to make this brighter in the camera? Um, slow the shutter speed. Slow the shutter speed is one, because what's going to happen? A slower shutter speed lets more light in. But what happens at a slower shutter speed when you're zoomed in to like 150 millimeters? Then you get motion blur. You could, but I'm assuming you have VR on this lens, right? Um, yes. So that would compensate for your movement, but not for this person's hand drawing. What's the second thing that we could do to let more light in? Um, change the ISO. You could, wh which way would you go? Um, you would want to go lower. To let more light in? Right. You want to go higher. I yeah, well, you're at 1600. So in order to make it brighter, if you made it slower, lo lower, you'd need to let more light in, which would mean a slower shutter speed. So that's the opposite way. Okay. So when you right. up your ISO, you're basically grabbing more light. So you would go from 1600, sorry, 800 to 1600, which is one stop of light. So a stop right. goes from 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 to 800, 800 to 1600, 1600 to 3200, 3200 to 6400. Basically, every time we double that, the light goes up a stop. So you're letting in light. So if your shutter speed was at 100 and you bumped it to, you bumped your ISO from 8 to 1600, that's one stop change. If you wanted to get the exact same image, you would take your shutter speed from one hundredth of a second to two hundredth of a second, and you would see the exact same thing here. Sure, there would probably be a little more grain, but now we've, we've started to discover how we could let more light in. And the third thing to let more light in would be 
which one? So we've done yeah. ISO and we've done shutter speed. What's the third thing that can control light? Change the f-stop. The f-stop. But in this case, we know that 5.6 is what the lens goes to when you're zoomed in this far. So we have to work with shutter speed and ISO in this case. So one thing you could do right off the bat is bump your ISO to 1600 and you would instantly open up and let more light in. Then you could double compensate and make your shutter speed say 80th of a second, 60th of a second, but you don't really want to go too slow. So does that all make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we good, we let light in. We would let more light into that. Um, I like this hand one. I would consider tweaking the edit, you know, editing this one and definitely right. uh, bumping your exposure uh, in Lightroom. So you want to just probably at least a stop and then contrast and, and go through there. Folgers one doesn't do too much for me. It's, I mean, it's interesting because we got the paintbrushes. I wish the paintbrushes were turned the other way. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. They're in the water for a reason. But it's kind of, I mean, it's cool that you have the person painting in the background, but yeah, it, I don't know, it's just missing it a little bit. Maybe it's the color, you know what I mean? Just because okay. of the color, it's a little, you know, it's, it's, it's underexposed. I like what you're going for here with the paint. You can also see that the color from the classroom is really bad from the yeah. light. So, I mean, I would skip past this one. I mean, you could go black and white, but I don't think it's a, the, as strong of an image as some of the others. This is good, too, because we can see part of the artwork being drawn with the, with the pastels. Um, just a little bit more with the exposure here. Let's see what's going on with this one. All right, so it opened up a little bit because you're at 55 millimeters, so it went to f4 instead of 5.6. So it let more light in naturally, which looks good. Um, it still needs to be slightly a little more brighter. All right, okay. but this is a candidate as well to tell the story. So you would have maybe five images with the bridge, a couple images of tell maybe three or four of the bridge. I like the two no parking things. They work together. The tight shots of the bridge. Um, and then there was one that we did right last week that would be good too. And then you have um, the portrait. Well, we, we have a couple portraits and maybe I'll get to some more. A kiln. Hmm. Clay. Oh, there's nothing better than playing with ceramics and, and clay. This is all right. I would definitely go black and white again because of the, the color or pull, pull some of it out. This is interesting, but the Mountain Dew is there, right? It kind of throws yeah. it off. But I like what you're starting to do to see and try to find the images here. This is better. I like this because we're getting a scene. We're getting the feel for the class, the, the painting, sorry, the drawing class, what's going on. This is a good start to the story. So this is one photo for the story. Then you've got a, a tight shot of the hands. Then you've got a tight shot of something else. Maybe we haven't gotten, it to, gotten to it yet, but we could do some tweaking. This would be a good black and white of a scene. High contrast, throw in some more. Um, basically, we would, we would want to pump this up a little bit. And I think a black and white would do this well. But I wouldn't mind this color being pulled. Um, I think we'd have to pull out. We'd have to work with the color a little bit. The color is what's throwing okay. it off. But I think it would be much better if we were able to color correct it a little more. But I like what you were doing here. It's a nice wide shot. It complements the tighter shots. You, you always need that. Maybe a shot of the bridge wide. You know, the full bridge from a distance that shows the city behind it or the Heinz factory behind it would give you more of a feeling. So you would see the bridge, you would see the no parking, you would see the tighter shots of the bridge, and this way you're telling the full circle of the story. Make sense? Yeah. Penguins yeah. fans, we need to skip them. <laughs> this is great. This is, this, is, this is awesome right here. Yeah, this was back... Um, these, I did a track thing it was like a practice okay. slash there was an event from a while back that I somehow they missed how'd you expose this stuff. one or you this was when you were just shooting uh, this was like I had my camera for like two weeks all right so, so good this is the same kid that's in the portrait right uh, no this is actually uh, one of our gym teachers well, I would still put the one kid up with the with the portrait next to a photo like this just because it shows okay. part of the story that's going... It, here you go again. This is great. So, is this a female, I hope? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, good. Yes. Just checking. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> this is great. So, now we've got a story with the track. We've got the portrait of the kid who's a runner. We've got the teacher demonstrating, because this is an awesome... This is a great shot. They're going to love this. Uh, and then you've got the feet of the, the girl. I hope there's a portrait of her. Is this her? That's her. 
This yeah. isn't that. This isn't that strong of an image. All these damn warning symbols on the freaking pole is is not very good in my mind. It's not your fault. Not your fault. Um, I right for stuff. Is she practicing or is she ready to run? Uh, I believe this was getting ready to run for a competition. Okay, I, I would ask to do a portrait um, of her, like holding with the different poles, just laying across, sitting on the ground, stretching, sitting on the bench, and things like that. That would be cool to find. This the focus is off. You have to pull this one out. It's focused yeah. on the wall in the background. This is here, too. Uh, obviously, the recommendation here, I know you, this is, what, two weeks into shooting? Something like that. I All right. have you, you're using the 55 long. to 200. So if you're going to use that lens and be at 5.6, definitely be at the 200 range. Back yourself up because it's going to make the background separate. It's going to separate the background from the subject. That's the whole point. So you can do it with your 55 to 200. You can do it with you know, those basic lenses. Just use it at 200. Right. Force yourself to be further away to compose this image just like you did here. But if you do that, you will separate your subject from the background. So I wouldn't use these as much. This is not bad. This tells a good story as well. So this could be an, another one as part of your photo story. This one, it's close, but I would get closer at a lower angle so that all you really see is you could focus here and then all of these will blow out of focus in the background. Okay. Nope. The back of the person doesn't work. Try to get the front of them as much as possible. And also don't forget that you do yeah. have shadows and other things like that on the ground, which could come in handy. Right. Um, all right. That's a good, it's an okay portrait. Not too keen on that, not too keen on that. It's interesting if you made this black and white, I think it would make create more interest. Because sometimes black and white helps create interest. I like what you did here. We're going to look and probably see that you were at the tail end. Yeah, tail end. Yep, you were at 200 on this. I could tell you were at 200 because of how the background compressed. When it, that's what happens. When you shoot wide angle, mm -hmm. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but when you shoot wide angle, the whole background, everything expands. So everything becomes more in focus. But when you shoot it at deeper, um, at 200 or further ends of the, uh, the, the zoom range, everything compresses more. So your subject becomes isolated from the background. And that's what happened here. You can see that they're separated from the grass in the background. It makes it much better. But I still wouldn't use this one. Laps to go. If this was in focus then I would like to use this as part of the story, but it's not in focus, correct? Okay. Right. Just checking. And tell me when we get, all right, mm, not as much as the other one. The other one's spectacular. And we're back to what we've seen already, correct? All yeah. right. So I think, I think you do have 10 shots here total between the two weeks. You do. Um, can you go shoot more? Um, yeah. I mean, you don't have to. It's just I think we're close to having the full photo story. So what, I, what I'd like you to do for next week as your third, you know, the, the second piece of homework is let's start going through. I want you to create a set with just the best images. So weed out the ones that, you know, we talked about. Pull down the ones that, that you think are the strongest you know, from what I said, to tell the best story and start putting them together. So take the best ones okay. from the art class, put them together. Take the best ones from the track and put them together. And then, um, and then you have the bridge. But I'd also like to see the story of the bridge a little more because you already have some good tight shots. Now you need to focus on the other things about the story of the bridge, like the whole bridge itself with the city in the background or the Heinz factory um, in the background because that tells a story unto itself. You know what I mean? All right, right. so um, questions for me. Um, not that I can think of. The only thing is Saturday is when I have to go to Philly. For Antonelli? For... Okay. Yes. All right, well, then so, if you don't have – I think we've got you, – you, you want to do 10 images or do you want to do more? Um, I, I believe what they said is 10. Um, I don't think they'd be mad. If no, I don't think more, they would be but... mad if they did more. So, Okay. This is what you should do. Go back and re-edit some of the images we talked about. All right? Okay. Put together little photo stories. Make it 15 pictures, three different photo stories. We've got the art class. Pick the five best photos of the art class. I'd like to see a portrait. If you have something that, that shows the people working, we've got the wide shot showing the people working. 
we can do tighter shots, maybe one or two of people drawing, then maybe some just random... Were those all the pictures that you had from there? From the um, art class? I believe there might be a few more rock All right, models. well, pull, pull the best five that you think are in there that tell the best story from wide to tight to medium and do the same thing with your five best track and field pictures, definitely including the, the pole vault shot, which is amazing, which is your best shot, um, the, the portrait of your guy, the portrait of the girl's feet, and then two other ones for that, and then pull out five from the two no parking and then three more from the bridge because I think they all work together, right? So let's go for right. 15 pictures, and we'll deliver them 15 in three separate photo stories, or in three photo stories together, because that way they can see that you're right. able to show multiple things that are going on. You're showing the story of what's going on with that bridge. You're showing the story of the art class, and you're showing the story of the track and field. Everything from a portrait, which is awesome at the track and field, to somebody in action at the track and field, to little subjects, you know, the little hidden gems of the feet. So all of those things are showing you, you that you're very well-rounded and you're seeing different images everywhere. All right, and then we should right. reconvene like in a couple days, like Tuesday, if we can do okay. that. Okay, Tuesday works. All right. All right. <laughs> all right, you, you probably need to get to bed to go to school, right? Yeah. All yeah. right, so this is going to wrap up the second one. Uh, of helping you figure out your portfolio. And next, we're going to get your, your picks. You know, if, if it doesn't have to be the best, you know, if you think that there's, you know, six or seven good shots from each one of those scenes, put them in and then we'll weed it out to the best 15 of the photo stories. And I'll help you with the editing and get you ready to go down to Philly. All right, Sam? All right. All right, sorry. All right sorry. guys, so that's it for the second round of helping Sam out here to build his portfolio, to go to college, to get accepted to Antonelli, and uh, that's it. So good job, way to go out and shoot more. I like what I'm seeing here. I like what you're doing. You're progressing really, really well already, so congratulations on that. And we're going to uh, wrap it up, and, and I'm just going to sign off, and we'll be, we'll be back with the third one, which may be the final edition. So we will see you. Have a good night. Have fun at school. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com.